liars, frauds, thieves, and bullshitters. Uh, my name is Pat Soroyce. You can also find us on Twitter at LCS Podcast and on TikTok at Lie, Cheat, Steal Podcast. If you like what you hear, please leave us a five-star review wherever you're listening to this, or you can subscribe to our Patreon, where we release two more episodes every month. That's patreon.com slash lie, cheat, and steal. As always, I'm here with my co-host, Kath Barbadoro. Kath, how you doing? Hi, Pat. Um, I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. I uh, I feel like every time we record these lately, um, I've been just getting out of the shower and look like very <laughs> weird, just like kind of drowned rat vibes so uh yeah no i'm good i'm uh, i've i've been on a big fitness kick lately so i've been working out a lot so i i worked out and then i came home took a shower and uh now i'm here how are you doing i'm doing good man just uh i was thinking about just like a shameless uh plug for the podcast that we can pull a clip out of it's like welcome to the submarine edition of <laughs> deal no i just i just been at, I've been at the house this week hanging out uh really following that submarine debacle that's been oh man yeah, yeah. it's been I, <laughs> it has been consuming all of my brain power it yeah. really is just transfixing uh <laughs> truly like one of the absolute worst ways i could think to go like oh yeah look i'm not feeling bad for anybody except that 19 year old but like yeah, yeah. still not the it's way hard. i would pick if yeah. i had to pick a way <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. I mean, if I could go out, the worst way to go out is knowing that you're going to leave a billion dollars to your stepson who's at the Blink-182 concert. <laughs> yeah, man. I, mean, I can't think of a worse way to die. <laughs> <laughs> Just knowing your shitty stepson is going to get all your money. Fuck. That really does add a terrible dimension to things. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I would have punched my way out of that submarine. I was like, there's no goddamn way that, <laughs> that wanker is getting my fucking billions of dollars. <laughs> Um, it has been like as you know we talk about a lot i have uh i always want to see like the public failings of billionaires because i sure. think that's i think that's ultimately good is if we see that these people are incapable of lead leadership just because they run a right. company is it a one for one so it's always good i do feel bad for the kid but it's just so like it's holy shit it's so poetic it's like it, it's like you couldn't like they're going to the titanic which is the metaphor for just hubris and like right. the just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like the, the, the folly of man. And it happened again. And that, that is just hilarious to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is just like a perfect metaphor. And it is like, it's a perfect thing of all of these billionaire people. They're so against like any form of government regulation. They're yeah. like, it's this bureaucracy like slows things down. It's bullshit. We can't innovate. Like we can't do our little billionaire business with all this stuff and then why do they die because nobody fucking checked their thing to see if it was safe like this is what happens when you rely on the free market a lot of things are going to fucking blow up with people inside them uh, before you get to the one that works so yeah man yeah i feel like they they regulated themselves on that trip right Anyway, this is now, this is coming out like a week after we recorded. So I'm sure this is all old news. Uh, maybe the Titan- maybe the people on that sub have come back to life since this was recorded. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, right. A, oh, man, yeah, it's zombie billionaires is coming up for the depths. Kill them before <laughs> the surface. <laughs> well, but yeah. yeah. But, oh, I, that- I have a, I have somewhat of a, of a segue here. Okay. Um, Because we are talking about extremely large sums of money on today's podcast. Um, This is, uh, yeah, probably I'm assuming some of the billionaires on on this uh, submersible probably owned uh, some of these commodities. Today we're talking about fancy jewels, jewels and gems. Jewels and gems. All right. All right. Uh, I know know a thing or two about uh, jewelry from my pawn shop days. Yeah. I don't know much about... I know we had to check like, the gold price every day and shit like that. Like, it's like I know a little bit about the market behind it, but mm-hmm. uh, I, I know there's a lot of room for fraud. I know that. What uh, what was your like biggest, most valuable piece of jewelry you got? Was there any like notable, notable um, jewels and gems coming through there? <laughs> we did have a Super Bowl ring uh, in one of the pawn shops I was at. Wow. It was from a guy on the east side of Austin. He was an older black dude. He played for I think the the, the Cowboys back in the day. And mm-hmm. he was on like he was on the team. He wasn't like you know like a household name, but he's on the team. Right. He got the ring, and it was in pawn. And he was waiting for his CTE check to come in. And as soon as it oh, did, he came man. in. Yeah, he was a really cool guy, and he ended up getting like 
millions in back pay. Uh, That's good. Like a medical, a medical settlement. A settlement, yeah. Yeah, came in there and he got his rings out and then he went home and killed his family. No, I'm <laughs> Jesus. He, no, he was a lovely guy and he got his ring back and I'm happy for him and I hope him and his family are doing fucking fantastic. Hell yeah. That, I'm glad it had a happy ending as far as we know. <laughs> he he deserved yeah. all that goddamn money. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, so today we're talking about uh, jewels and gems. Uh, we're not talking about any any kind of fraud on behalf of that, although I'm sure there is plenty. Uh, we're talking about a heist. We're doing a heist episode today. Heist episode. All right. I do love a good heist episode. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of, there's a, this is sort of an interesting spin on the heist episode. Um, I know we've done, we've done a, a episode about a Brinks truck robbery before. Yeah. It was the old guy. It was the old unassuming guy who would like strike up a conversation with the Brinks truck guys and then just walk yeah. off. When they're like, Oh, those old guys are going to steal my money. False. Yeah. And like, uh, there've been a lot of sort of notable Brinks trucks robberies. I mean, you see a Brinks truck, you know, there's something good in there. You know? All I think about is robbing a Brinks truck. Every time I see it, I'm just like, <laughs> it kind of moves what I have to pull off here to rob right. this truck. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, it like, I mean, the reason we think that is because it is an armored car. So like, it, it's not easy to rob, but uh, yeah. it does call to mind the uh, the temptation. So. Every- I'm on Grand Theft Auto. When I see one, I whip around immediately. I stop whatever I'm doing, whatever, you know, <laughs> I'm in the middle of, I'm just like, I'm going to go blow that truck up. And I think you get like 25 grand for each, each truck you explode. So nice. They're hot. They're, they're high targets. Uh, I know they do have those little gun ports in the side mm-hmm. of them on the doors. And I was, that was crazy. It's because if somebody wanted to the door, they could just stick their, their barrel of their gun to that little gun port and fucking done deal. So be careful. Yeah, definitely be careful. Um, so this this kind of has a little bit of a twist because this is a Brinks truck robbery, um, but Brinks kind of fucked up here. Uh, this is like a real Brinks problem. The this armored car was not as armored as it should have been. Oh and, shit! Uh, this is so. This is sort of the latest uh, Brinks robbery. Uh, as we've said, there have been many throughout history, um, but this is the most recent one. And a lot of this. Uh, a lot of the stuff I'm going to talk about comes from a really good New York Magazine article by Miranda Green that came out in May. Um, it uh, I don't want to tell say the title because uh, I feel like it'll give some stuff away. But uh, yeah, Miranda Green, I guess we can say uh, the the main headline is 100 million gone in 27 minutes. So Man. check out that article. Yeah, 100 mil, 100 mil. <laughs> Jesus um, Christ. Also, to think of like the only other ways you can use a hundred mil in a couple uh, couple minutes is the stock market or just a horrible hand of roulette. <laughs> just like, right. Oh, <laughs> What's that? Uh, that um, Tim Robinson sketch, Mister Luck. Oh my God, where he's feeling lucky. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good one. If you have it, yeah. if you're an I think you should leave fan, definitely check out the characters episode with Tim Robinson. It has. Yeah. Some real classics on it. It's really fucking good. He's like trying to buy the poker chip back from that guy. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, very good sketch. Um, yeah, so uh, we'll just dive into it here. So um, this happened in 2022 uh, at the end of the International Gem and Ruby Show in California. So I mean, pretty good place to plan a robbery, if I do say yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, a bunch of shifty guys walking around the outside of that convention center. Well, literally, funny you should say that. That literally was like a warning issued to people at the International Gem and Ruby <laughs> show at uh, at this particular one. They like told everybody like, hey, there's been some like weirdos around here. So like yeah. when you leave, make sure to like leave with extreme caution, like really yeah. keep an eye on your stuff. Um so, which I'm assuming they would hopefully do anyway. I mean, if you have a sign yeah. that says International Gem and Ruby Show, <laughs> people yeah. might want to be mugging you, leaving yeah. that, you know? I wanted to traipse out of the International Gem and Ruby Show, fucking carefree, skipping <laughs> along with a bag clearly marked jewels, as I do, and it's right. right to do that. <laughs> and uh, maybe if Democrat-run cities weren't corrupt with crime right now. Exactly. I- Exactly. And this happened in the uh, Democrat stronghold of California. So, you know, that's clearly crime is running rampant. Uh, 
I love the Democrat run cities thing. And it's like, oh, what, how are the Republican run cities doing good? It's like, oh, you mean the vast swaths of farmland? They're doing okay. <laughs> like, yeah. There are many Republican cities out there. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, the International Gem and Ruby Show, they sell tons of different stuff there. Like they sell raw gems. They sell uh, like decorative beads. They sell Rolexes. They sell gold. Like it's, you know, all that kind of stuff all together. And obviously, like, these salesmen are dealing in millions of dollars worth of merchandise, so they don't bring it in their car. They're not, like, driving with a trunk full of stuff to this expo the way you would if you were, like, I don't know, going to Comic-Con or something. Like, you can't just throw it in your trunk. So most of these guys contract with Brinks trucks to bring their stuff to and from wherever they're selling. Ooh, that's a hot weekend to overtime if you're a Brinks truck driver. I bet. Jim and Ruby town the show is in town. Yeah, I bet every every security officer and law enforcement guy is getting fucking mad over time that weekend. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> it's uh it is a time for everyone to be cashing in. Yeah, Rich yeah. people <laughs> and the working class security. Yeah, guys. yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like uh with like sex workers when the Super Bowl is in town. It's just right. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's a real big event. <laughs> so um I want to talk a little bit about Brinks. So like Brinks really does have kind of a monopoly on this business. Like if you want to transport something valuable and you're in the private sector, like this is the way you go. Um, They've been around since the 19th century uh, and they've been, you know, funneling, like driving cash between banks, uh, all that kind of stuff. Um, And they, so they, in 2018, they bought like their major competitor, which is Dunbar. So they're like, they're it. And yeah. uh, everybody was using them. So this this expo, it was in San Mateo, California. Um, everybody's using it. Um, and the the heist happens out of this Brinks truck. It is like a direct, direct thing uh, that happens. Um, so there are two drivers. Um, there's, sorry, let me look up his name. Okay, so the two drivers are James Beatty and Tandy Motley. Good names. Okay. Very good names. Yeah, yeah, very, very cool names. Also, I assume since we have their names, they made a few missteps. <laughs> I would imagine. Like, yes, unfortunately, <laughs> um, they did kind of fuck up. Uh, but okay, so um, the, also, is it husband and wife or just or just uh, platonic friends? I think it's just two guys. I think it's two security guard guys. Oh, I think so. One guy's name was Tammy. I heard. I heard Tammy. Oh no, it? Tandy. T A N D Y. Oh. Which I don't know what gender that is, but I I think it's a dude. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's gay southern man. That's the gender. Right there. I mean, yeah, they, they there's nothing precluding them from being a couple because it is, yeah. you know, Democrat run California. So yeah, 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 that guy Tandy sings baritone in a barbershop quartet. <laughs> <laughs> that is that kind of name for sure. Yeah. Um, so what happened uh, with the heist is that uh, the, they leave the um, Gem and Ruby show uh, in the evening. And around 2 a.m. that night, uh, they are driving um, and they stop at a truck stop kind of on the edge of L.A. County. And uh, so there are these two guys and um, they're driving together. They're like taking turns. And James Beatty is asleep at this point. So Brinks has rules about how long you can drive and how much time you need to take off a day. So um, often like p- people are driving and guarding in teams. And uh, this guy, James Beatty, he had been driving and there's a rule that you have to be off for 10 hours per day. You can't drive yeah. any more than that. So um, he was asleep, Tandy Motley was driving and they stop at this Flying J truck stop uh, near uh, the LA County line. Good Flying J, man. Absolutely. I, 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 I could walk around a fucking Flying J with my eyes closed. There was... <laughs> Like, because especially because this happened near LA, guaranteed there was a road comic in that Flying J. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> bet my life on it. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, Tandy comes out from the from the Flying J, and he notices that the red seal on the back of the Brinks truck that you know indicates that it has not been tampered with had been torn and was lying on the ground. So he immediately calls. Uh, he calls nine one one. So the thing that is interesting about this is that Brinks, uh, the Brinks truck that they were driving was not actually one of their armored cars. It wasn't like your classic, uh, you know, the kind with the gun ports and everything. Yeah, yeah, Um, yeah. 
it was basically like a, a trailer like it wasn't it was secure it was like locked yeah. but it wasn't what you think of when yeah. you think of uh you know uh, uh the fucking brakes truck you know yeah. <laughs> what did they do like isn't there something to be said for using like a, a nondescript car like a kia soul or some shit like that's that's a good point again because yeah. we said you see a brinks truck you know something good's in there yeah, you yeah, see yeah, a kia yeah. soul you're like nothing good's in here yeah yeah that's just hamsters that is just i don't <laughs> i don't need to steal a bunch of empty mcdonald's bags yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah uh all in all they call 911 cops come they sort of start piecing it together uh and they realize that uh around a hundred million worth of gems and rubies have been taken from this uh, truck. And they think this might be the largest jewelry theft by value in modern U S history, which is like pretty wow. cool. Yeah. Um, so the, the drivers tell the cops that they, they have an inkling they've been followed from the gem and Ruby show. And again, like there were sort of word was sort of going around that like, yeah, these people were where there were some some bad actors maybe about so these guys like the one guy said like he saw somebody this guy was like kind of giving him eyes when they were leaving uh that who was driving like a, it was a bearded guy with a silver suv that's his description um and he uh yeah he thought that that might they might have been followed um there are other indications that this was a um calculated heist this wasn't a crime of opportunity yeah. um maybe like you said maybe it also wasn't like maybe it was a nondescript looking truck so maybe yeah. like you would have had to know um but the main reason they think this was calculated was that it's not like they just grabbed a bunch of stuff from the like closest part of the trailer they like went in and grabbed specific bags yeah 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 that's yeah that's a, 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 like I, obviously we'll find out the details but that shows me that they kind of knew where the stuff was at yeah, uh, and, and like it, it's I, I remember uh, my my uncle's roommate's odd connection, but this guy that he lived with in Florida, um, he was like he was telling us that he worked at a KFC and they used pressure cookers, and he said they had a, they got robbed by a guy in a mask one time and he came in and he was like everybody back by the pressure cooker and he's like everybody was like hey do you work at a KFC? And he was like, no, <laughs> That's <been> so a- <laughs> funny. <laughs> like, Damn it! Me. I blew my cover. <laughs> Oh yeah, my like god. A very specific thing. Everybody's like, wait a minute. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that rules. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm assuming he was caught. I'm assuming his plan was I would imagine. Yeah, I think so. This is a story he told us around a dinner table in like 1995. So I don't really remember the <laughs> But I always remember that. Like, everybody be back by the pressure cooker. <laughs> That's great. Um, yeah, so like, apparently, so there were like, there was stuff from multiple uh dealers in this truck too it was like 15 different um sellers of of gems and rubies had their stuff in this in this truck so um a bunch of them lost stuff there was one guy who lost like his entire stock which fucking sucks like he lost everything um but yeah it was clear that they like kind of knew where things were so because everything was wrapped in these like identical plastic bags um so you couldn't see what was in it yeah there were some tags on them, but there's debate about whether the tags like indicated the value or not. Like, and if you have time to to get in there and check a tag, you know, so that's that's yeah. like you're, you're counting down precious seconds. So, um, the the guys, the guards, are like immediately worried that they're gonna get, like, people are gonna think it's them. You yeah. know, like they're they're like the first people they go to are the employees, and they're really worried about it because they're like, we didn't do it. Um, they they were like maybe the jewelers did it for insurance money like maybe somebody who knew where the stuff was did it uh to try to get a payout like maybe they weren't selling enough but as we'll see with like sort of the fallout from this i'm not sure if that tracks either spoiler alert they haven't found this stuff so Uh, okay it is unsolved when you first told me the names, for some reason, I thought those were the guys. So I was like, oh, so they messed up. That's how we know their names. And now I, I have a read on the situation here. Uh, they they, they messed up in the stuff. sense that they let they, a bunch of stuff get yeah, stolen. Yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, but... they still <laughs> fucked up a little bit. Um, it is crazy. Like, uh, like, Jules, in my mind, like, 
when you're jewels or whatever, it exists kind of almost like it's only to be worn and to be stolen. Like, you know, yeah. like our classic understanding of jewels. It's like either they're on a king's head or they're being stolen from a dragon. And right. that's like that's, that's the, 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 the space they occupy in my mind. Like, why have a truck full of jewels if yeah. not have it stolen? Like, it's it not, is like, it, it is funny. I mean, especially because like, I'm just, I don't know. Like, I like... I think jewelry is pretty, but like I'm I'm just not a big like expensive jewelry person. I don't really understand the point of it or like even like a really fancy watch. I'm like I don't totally I don't totally get why you would spend this money on this unless you had so much money, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that. Yeah, I've never been a big jewelry guy. I had a class ring for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I, I like the first year I was at a high school, I wore the class ring like it was blue. So if I was wearing a blue outfit, I would wear the blue ring. And I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah. And that I have no clue where that thing is. <laughs> they got yeah, lost. I have like I have like a little gold chain that I wear sometimes like but I, I, it's more about like it's about how they look. It's not about like buying something valuable, you know, yeah. like I don't really understand the the appeal of that because like it just means someone's going to fucking rob you like. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's how Batman lost his mom. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't want to put myself in any situation that would cause anyone to have a superhero origin story with my yeah. demise. <laughs> well, I, I like I probably mentioned it in our pawn shop episode. Like I was in like I wasn't even smashing grab. I had a guy. I showed him a ring, and he went to go run out of the fucking store, and I tackled him. And yeah. The only re- yeah, I, I told this story because the only reason I tackled him, I don't give a fuck about the store. It's like I had to work at that pawn shop every day. I couldn't have anybody being like, yo, that's that fat piece of shit that got robbed. Like, I, like, I, had to, <laughs> like, I, I worked at a pawn shop in the hood. I had to be like, yo, they tried to rob that guy and he fucking tackled the dude. Like, right, I, yeah, you have to show some authority. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah like the one time we ended up breaking a jewelry case in the process that cost more than the ring. Like, that was. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, you're like, I don't care about that. I have my rep yeah. still, and that's what's important. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't, I'm, yeah, I'm over here. I, I got to maintain a tight ship, and I can't, I can't let this word get out that I got a guy like that. Uh, <laughs> I'm fighting for my life. They're like, yeah, don't do that again. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so this stuff gets stolen, and uh, the, the jewelers are pissed because they thought that they were signing up for an armored car to protect yeah. this stuff. <laughs> so, like, public- the Briggs trailer <laughs> yeah the, the u-haul of the Briggs world like so apparently the the cab was armored like the guys had guns and the cab was reinforced but the the place where the jewels actually were was not which yeah. like totally defeats the purpose <laughs> like <laughs> i mean i guess it doesn't if you're gonna get like hijacked or something but it does yeah. if someone if you're stopped at a fucking flying J and someone yeah. could just get in yeah. back there i wonder what they bought like when they come out of the flying J. yeah What's the most humiliating assortment of objects? You have like a, a fucking like a, a long ass slim gym and like a slurpee. Oh man! Oh nuts! She's got to put the slurpee down on the curb and call your boss. <laughs> yeah, I mean they were certainly not getting any food that wasn't at least a little bit shameful at that flying gym. At, <laughs> at two in the morning. At two in the morning. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Two in the morning, flying Jay. They're about to clear the grill off. They'll just give it to you. They're like, you can have all. <laughs> These things have been out for a day and a half. <laughs> Man, me and uh, me and this guy, my boy Brian, back here, uh, back in like the early two thousands, we walked out of a Seven uh, Eleven, and the beer truck was out there, and it had one of the, the sides open. It was empty, but there's other little panels, and mm-hmm. we were like, "Oh hell yeah!" Now I know that there's a little lock at the end of the truck that you hit and opens all of them, and then you lock it again when you're done. And so me and Brian were like checking every panel. We we're like nineteen, trying to. Lift this <laughs> No beer. The dude came out. He was like, "Man, get the fuck away from my truck!" And we were like, "No!" Oh. <laughs> we just ran off, and that was can't blame that, us for trying. Just yeah, run yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're too young to buy it. You know. <laughs> so. <laughs> So like, yeah, they're, they, these jewelers are pissed because they say, so this guy Ming Cheng, he was one of the people who lost like everything, like his all of his stock was gone in yeah. this robbery. He said, Brinks was supposed to use an armored truck. They didn't, they used a trailer to transport our jewelry uh, and only yeah. two armed guards, one of them was sleeping and one of them went to get food. So nobody was keeping an eye on the truck. Like, who <laughs> if, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I got Laurel and Hardy fucking guards and jewels and shit. That's, yeah, uh, man. You got to at least wake the guy up. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is something like Harry and Lloyd say, hey, man, wake up. I'm going inside. Yeah, you gotta, <laughs> got to at least wake the guy up. That's that's crazy. Also, that's kind of like with the Hatton Garden heist that we did. Mm-hmm. Was a lot of those people that had their jewelry in there, it was like people who made custom pieces. And they weren't jewel owners. They were jewel makers. They were like, they made yeah. the jewelry. And it's like, hey, these are pieces that I'm working on. And like, I, you know, it, 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 that's somebody's entire livelihood. That, that right. is... Like stress, those yeah. people, I mean, obviously, like you make a good living being a jeweler, but like you don't make you don't make so yeah. much that like your mar you have margins. Like if you yeah, lose yeah, a bunch of yeah. stuff you've been working on, you're fucked. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. People have already paid deposits on shit like that. That's uh, yeah, yeah man. That, that could brew, that could We've all seen something. uncut gems. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Right. That is uh, that is not in well. That's all I've been thinking about since we started this episode. By the way. <laughs> so, yeah. so um. Yeah, obviously, like, the the guards are, uh, you know, stressed out because they say, uh, Motley says, what worries me the most is that they always want to blame the employee. Um, so there were 73 bags of, of jewels in this truck. Uh, the thieves got 24 of them. Or no, sorry, 22 of them. Initially, it was, they thought it was 24, then they found 22. So, yeah, 22 bags of jewelry worth about $100 million. Uh <laughs> I love Molly. Like, they always want to blame the guy who was paid to guard the jewels when the jewels get <laughs> fair, fair enough. It's like, yeah, well, I don't think this is like a, you know, that far-fetched of a thing. Everybody wants to blame the babysitter when a kid drowns in a pool. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like when, will, when will society loosen up? <laughs> Stop being so prejudiced against guards yeah. of jewels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't think about that. You're absolutely right. It's like, no, they're right to look at the guards first. Fair enough. I just want to side with the little guy, you know? Because, like, he has the least amount of money in this situation. So I'm like, yeah, it isn't fair that they blame them. And it's like, no, it's pretty fair. I guess I I messed it up. Like, blaming them for taking it is one thing. But, like, blaming... Suspicion, correct. Yes, one thing. But, like, like, blaming it for it getting taken. It's like, yeah, that is on you, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe and there is, like, there are some inconsistencies with their timeline that, like, seem a little suspicious. To my knowledge, they have not been charged, um, but yeah. they're, like, in various depositions, they've given, like, inconsistent timelines where, like, um, well, like, one of them that's kind of funny is, like, the guy who was asleep, um, apparently, like, given his timeline, he should have been awake by then. Like, he had he had been... Oh, his yeah. shift of sleeping he'd been asleep for like 11 hours or like off for like 11 hours and so he was like he sort of conceded that like maybe he was awake or something and it's like i think that guy just slept over when he was supposed to yeah yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah and that's also like that completely explains it like if somebody's like okay in your timeline you said your alarm went off at 7 a.m right but at 30 you were still asleep it's like you're damn right i was <laughs> like, right was- yeah 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 I mean, I don't know why he wouldn't just admit that when the alternative is that he stole $100 million worth of jewels. But it is, like, it is sort of unclear. Like, there's some there's some discrepancy about, like, when they actually left San Mateo. Like, I don't know. They they may have been involved. Like, they may have tipped somebody off or something. But, it says yeah, your they're not sure. You said, that you said that you got pizzeria combos and a Code Dew Mountain Red. <laughs> <a code> red <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Then here you said it was Buffalo Blue Cheese combos. So, I mean, what... <laughs> What's happening here, man? Like, what what's is going the truth? <laughs> <laughs> that, those are my two go-tos at fucking gas stations. I love yeah. combos. And for some reason, combos, it's, a, it's an odd fear to have. I have a fear that snack is going to get canceled. <laughs> I don't know why just, like, <laughs> like canceled because they like said a slur or just yeah, discontinued? Like, I, yeah, no, canceled as they said a slur. Like I can imagine if there was a, a, a snack that's going to make a social faux pas in 2023, combos <laughs> is high on that list. I just, they feel like, the uncle of snacks <laughs> yeah no you're right they have like they have like anti-woke vibes for yeah. some reason <laughs> yeah like don't, don't ask combos what they think about israel just yeah you know, <laughs> just, uh, just 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 <laughs> let them let them be a snack you know don't don't bother them so not only like they they it seemed like they stole things that were uh like they stole things very specifically and when they did do the inventory they did find that like the most expensive stuff was what got stolen. So it was people not only with a knowledge of like what stuff was in the truck, but also a knowledge yeah. of jewels, you know? Yeah, yeah. So definite some kind of inside job. We just don't know inside where or Yeah, like, inside you know. inside where or what. But that this wasn't like us, you know? Like this yeah. wasn't <laughs> 
Yeah, it wasn't just a couple people off the street. But, like, I wonder, like, to even what degree would a driver know exactly what right. to do? I'm sure you're like, like, you know, I'm, I'm hauling jewels, but if you're like, oh, what, what are they, what's, what cut are they? Like, I would imagine the driver's like, I don't fucking know, man. They're just in a bag. It says jewels. Yeah, right. and, like, and also, like, a different guy loaded the truck than the people who were driving it. So... Uh -huh. That's like another thing too, is like there was a different Brinks employee who was in charge of, of filling the trailer. So I think you're right. I don't know if necessarily they would even know what they yeah. were what they were doing. I mean, we'll get into it because the, one of the reasons this is interesting is because there's been a bunch of lawsuits. Uh, Brinks is suing the jewelers. The jewelers are suing Brinks. It's this whole thing. How's um, Brinks jewelers? <laughs> What's their argument? Like, we'll, we'll get into it. Uh, <laughs> Why would you let us have these things in the first place? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it, it's it's interesting, but um, one thing that comes up in the lawsuits is like the paperwork that you have to do to get stuff transported on a Brinks truck because you yeah. have to have like a declared value of yeah. what's in there. Um, but I don't know. I so I think maybe the drivers would know that, but they wouldn't necessarily know the specifics. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's a good argument that maybe the guys driving the truck weren't weren't in on it in that way. I mean, they yeah. maybe like told somebody when they'd be stopping or something because that's there, there is that. Yeah, it seems like very clear that like whoever did this knew the the route of that truck knew when they were going to leave knew when they were going to stop. So um, the so Brinks was being pretty shady about this. Um, they didn't they didn't end up formally informing the jewelers that their stuff had been stolen for two days. So yeah, they knew about this. And like some of the jewelers had found out sort of through the grapevine before Brinks had even notified them. Uh, um, God, that to, to be that the person, like, I don't know who you could, would you call Brinks? If you're like <laughs> transporting that level of stuff, like if you call this is a regular customer service agent, get bumped into a manager. But I'd imagine, be, I'd hope there was like a direct line to someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> If you lost seventy three million dollars with the jewels, press one. Or like I don't know if that's how it works, but just to have to deal with that that line of incoming calls, like that has to be crazy because they're rightfully pissed. They're like, dude, how am I figuring this out? And yeah. you guys have known about this shit for forty eight hours. That's yeah, that that's shady, very shady. And so, like a lot of the jewelers are pissed at Brinks because, um, yeah, they didn't tell them. And like obviously, when Brinks loses stuff of this value. Brinks has got to pay them back for the yeah. amount that they've insured. So like Brinks is probably scrambling like, oh fuck, we need a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like we can't, we, they probably like didn't want to tell them so that they could figure out what they were going to have to do on their end and what they'd be yeah. legally liable for. Yeah, um, yeah. And that's, that's what comes up in all these lawsuits, right? So Brinks eventually said, look, we'll pay you back the amount you'd bought in insurance for the theft, but not more than that. So um, they totaled uh, the amount of insurance that the jewelers had purchased on the stuff in the truck, but the, their insurance, they only insured it to $10 million. They didn't insure the full value. Yeah. Um, so uh, Brinks, basically, Brinks ends up suing them because they say it's illegal for you to undervalue your items in this way. Like, you fucked us over. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So... Yeah, so uh, the the representative from Brinks said, Brinks believes that each defendant seeks to recover more from Brinks than is permitted under the contract. So like all that paperwork about declaring what's in there, the insurance, all that stuff, um, Brinks is saying, we don't have to pay you more. Like we're actually doing you a favor by even paying this because you yeah. undervalued what was in there. Um, well, I, I mean, I guess it's just you don't want to pay the money for the insurance yeah. is the only motivation. But it feels like, again, like if you're, if you're dealing like if you're a, if you're a jeweler, it's like why would you? Like it feels like that would be a cost to do a business, you know. But I mean, I guess people yeah. cheat. You know? like, well, well, yeah, like, and like when was the last time this happened? You know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody robs armored trucks. This isn't a fucking rap <laughs> song, you know. What I'm saying? Right. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't fucking Fast and the Furious. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> but also know, like, the they got the little cars they can drive under the truck and then you know, switch <laughs> the lane. I've seen it happen. But the jewelers also contest look, you didn't transport this stuff the way you said you were gonna. Like, yeah. we we paid for a certain amount of protection and you didn't provide it. So, yeah. so Brinks is saying, look, you undervalued the stuff. Um, the uh, jewelers who lost their stuff 
counter Sue Brinks and are seeking $200 million in damages. They're like, I'm going to do you one better, Brinks. <laughs> They're about to be on the brink of fucking bankruptcy. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's so insane. there were 15 uh, victims of this. 14 of the 15 countersued. A couple have now settled for an undisclosed amount. So I think they were probably just hoping to get more than the 10 million, you know, like. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they basically say that the company was negligent in putting it in this truck that was like not protected well enough. Yeah. Um, especially because as we said, they knew that there was a security risk at this expo. They knew that there was like some weird people who were like maybe keeping an eye on what was yeah. going on around there. Why would um, you ever put a whole bunch of money and jewelry in one fucking place and then advertise it as an expo? It just seems so weird. Like, what do you need to see the stuff in person for? I mean, I guess you could buy it. Maybe it's like a gun show. A lot of a lot of ignorance on my part. But I just feel like, why would you be like, the, come on down to the the the, the, uh, the the Civic Center full of billions of dollars of jewelry sales? It's, it's these very yeah. risky... Well, and again, like it is like lots of lots of stuff is like this, like gun shows and like technology expos and stuff. But rarely is it stuff that is so easy to just like put in your pocket. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's like, like the stuff there is so valuable, but also so portable. Like, that's yeah. why it's like it's that's really the, hard to steal like an entire fucking, I don't know, flat screen TV or something. Yeah. Not that flat screen TVs are even valuable anymore, but you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's that's what's jewelry. I mean, shit from working at the pawn shop. That was always the thing. It's like this yeah. is such a little tiny thing, and it costs. We have three thousand dollars in this, and we can yeah. sell it for five. Like it's 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 a lot of fucking money, and yeah, it's uh, that is one of them. So, um, uh, Brink says our customers trust us to cover them for any losses, however unlikely. In turn, we trust our customers to declare the full and correct value of the goods they ask us to transport. According to the information the customers provided to us before they shipped their items, the total value of the missing items is less than $10 million. In this case, we held up our end and fulfilled our contract, promptly settling a claim by one of the affected customers and subsequently settling two more. The others have chosen to litigate, admitting under oath that they undervalued their goods and even did so regularly. While we are deeply disappointed by this breach of our trust and the plain language of our contracts, the courts have responded favorably to our position and we remain willing to compensate these customers for the declared value of their goods. So that's a statement from Brinks. Yeah. I kind of like, I sort of, I see both sides of it here. Like, yeah. I think I'm more on the jeweler's side, but also it's like, yeah, if you did the contract wrong, like they, yeah. they kind of don't have to pay you anything like on the letter of the yeah. law. Yeah, no, that's 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 hundred percent. That's that's like especially the whole thing of like undervalue on the insurance. It's like when, if you're if you're doing that to save money, you have to consciously be like, there's a chance my shit could get stolen, and that I'm only gonna get ten million dollars right. off this twenty million dollar thing that I have. Like you have to know that's a risk going in there, and you gotta weigh it. Like, is this worth the money I'm saving on the insurance? And if it's if you think it is, by all means, go go forward with it. But you are taking a risk. I would love to know how much this insurance costs like that. I'm just curious, you know, like, about how much it costs to insure something in a Brinks truck like that. It's like, dude, it's six bucks a day. Okay. Like, you know, right. How much... <laughs> like, like how much are they saving? I'm, I'm very, very confused. Uh, um, I wonder if you go, could go back and look at history and see like the most money lost off the attempt to save the smallest amount of money. Like, you know, it's like, <laughs> I know like rental cars or whatever, it's like $25 a day or something like that for the insurance. And you crash a rental car. Now you're on the hook for like 14 grand or whatever the case may be. I wonder what like the largest, I, I all I had to spend was this. And then said, I lost this. I, I, I wonder I'm, if that's I'm imagining at least this probably isn't the most, but it's probably the most common is um, drunk drivers who don't want to pay for an Uber. Like, oh, I yeah. feel like that's got to happen all the time. And then yeah. you, either a die yeah so like either you die or you crash your fucking car and your car's totaled and like yeah. if you're if you're making those kind of decisions i'm gonna guess you don't have great insurance like yeah. most likely <laughs> yeah so I I've, think, that's probably a common one i don't know if it's like yeah. the most but what you got to factor in is yeah the cost of uber that night but then the cost of uber to go back and get your car now get maybe your car it's the next day maybe, yeah maybe it's worth being dead at that point I don't yeah know. <laughs> Maybe it's worth crashing your fifteen thousand dollar car or whatever. I don't even know how much cars cost anymore because I haven't had one in so long. They're a lot, Damn. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're a pretty good amount. Uh, they're never <laughs> as cheap. They're never as cheap as you want them to be. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. 
Yeah. That was a good dad answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, holy shit. I aged five years giving that answer. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, so this is this is just a really interesting story that like doesn't yet have a have a resolution. But one thing that I think is funny um, is that apparently, regardless of the outcome of this lawsuit, Brinks has said that none of these people can ever use a Brinks truck again, which is, like, <laughs> which is pretty shitty. Like, yeah. again, because we talked about like Brinks is sort of the monopoly, like they don't, yeah. you know, they, <laughs> there's not a lot of alternatives. Um, but yeah, they've been banned. Do not serve, you know? Banned from breaks. That's wild. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the, if I know any brakes competitors off top. Or Dunbar. I've seen Dunbar out there. But they Dunbar's the one they bought. Yeah. I think Iron Mountain. No, Iron Mountain's like document disposal. And shit. Yeah, that's documents. <laughs> yeah. Dude, yeah, that's great. Yeah, you can't use brakes anymore. You just gotta, like, you just gotta wing it. You just gotta fucking uh, put a false bottom in your suitcase or whatever. <laughs> no, you do. <laughs> Go Pesci from Casino, you hide it all in your wife's hair. Yeah. <laughs> now that you can't use Briggs. <laughs> I mean, I think your Kia Soul idea is pretty good. I think maybe yeah, they should do that. Nondescript car, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying, like, I, I, I'm trying to think of the car I've been pulled over in the least. And I think it was, uh, <laughs> I think it was when I, had, when I had my 97, my first car ever was a 97 Ford Escort station wagon, nice. uh, aka the Padillac Soroy Scalade. <laughs> <laughs> And that thing got zero attention from the cops. They did not give a fuck about that car. <laughs> you just reminded me of what my car was named that I forgot about. I had a I had a Honda Fit, and it was named Lush Honda Lester. Oh, my nice. 20, 2013 it. Honda Fit, the Lush Honda Lester. <laughs> R.I.P. to both the woman it was named after and that car. Yeah, both yeah, gone. Uh, Dude, I, I think I, I think I got a ride. I think you from one of the early LCS recordings. You gave me a ride back to Sandstone. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, man. I missed that what car. What a time. That was with me and uh, Zach Brooks were staying in the, uh, the apartment 313, and we called it the LaShonda Lester Memorial Trap House. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. She's she's given her name to a lot of stuff. We've, uh, yeah, yeah, we've named yeah. many things after her. Um, yeah, R.I.P., man. Wonderful woman. R. Check R. out her stand-up clips on YouTube. One of the best. Um, but yeah, this is like pretty much where we leave it. So one another thing that I think is kind of interesting about this is um, it's being investigated by Kroll Securities, which is like, an extremely high level uh, security firm that is owned by Nick Kroll's dad. I was so, gonna ask. <laughs> yeah, no, Nick Kroll outside of comedy is a literal billionaire. Like his dad yeah, is. That's what I. That's what I've heard. Super, super high level um, corporate security guy. So Kroll is like Kroll is trying to get to the bottom of this. Um, as I said, they found some inconsistencies with. Um, uh the two drivers and their sort of account of things of like they uh one of them said they left at 8 25 p.m one of them said they left at midnight uh one oh, guy that said is, he, that's a big discrepancy yeah yeah, yeah and like yeah. it doesn't it like they initially said they left at midnight but then <laughs> it's like again either one of these things because if they left at midnight and then they got to this flying j they would have had to be going so fucking fast yeah it's like <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they were like, maybe they were speeding, you know, <laughs> that's what they don't want to fess up to. They're like, oh man, if I pop for speeding, dude, that's a point of my license. And, uh, you know, I wonder if Kroll security is going to get these guys in an interrogation room. They're like, all right, bring them in. It's like, I'm going to bring in my son and have him do characters at you. Until, like, <laughs> until you, until yeah. you submit, until you say, Ooh, there's uncle. not much difference in the voices either. You don't know where one character is and the other. <laughs> Get him, Nick. Arr, arr, arr. Yeah, I, I do love uh, Kroll shows. Actually, very funny. I enjoy. It. Yeah, Nick. Nick Kroll rocks. He's yeah. great. He's like he and he and Julia Louis Dreyfus are like the only funny, extremely rich people. It's yeah, like just yeah, yeah. Um, As far as like people who came from like obscene family wealth, like it's yeah, a miracle like, that they're as funny as they are. Yeah, not like high side of comfortable, but like fucking like generational wealth. Rich, like capital yeah. R rich. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there was a I I worked at a a Walgreens for like a week one time. Um, <laughs> And I worked, I worked there, and the manager was a uh, was a trans woman who had gone at, in her youth had gone to an all boys school, uh, and her parents had a lot of money. And, and she goes, "Oh, you're a comedian, right?" I go, "Yeah." She goes, uh, "Do you know Nikki?" And I was like, "Nikki, Nikki, like Nikki, like Nicholas Savarino." Like I think I asked, he's right. like, "No, Nikki, Nikki Kroll, Nikki Kroll. He's going to be playing at the uh, at the Frank Irwin Center." I was like, "Oh, Nick Kroll." 
the guy whose face is on the digital readout of the curtains break her center. She's like, Yeah, I went to school with that guy. I went to like a boys' school with him when I was younger. I was like, Oh, she's like, Is he doing pretty good? I was like, I I think you know the answer to that question. Like I mean, yeah. regular people like truly have no idea yeah, what the no, comedy no. landscape looks like. It's pretty it's it's pretty wonderful. Yeah, but yeah, just, shout no, out Nick, Nikki Kroll. Nikki Kroll. Shout out um, Nikki Kroll, shout out his dad, who I think is probably evil. Um, I think he's evil. I would imagine. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, why, that's why he's so funny, is just to get away from his dad. I think he's like a Mossad agent or something. They're like, yeah, it's it's like yeah. very like yeah. intelligence. I don't know. Maybe Nick Kroll is a psyop, who knows. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so these lawsuits are ongoing. They have not recovered the jewels, as far as I know. They don't know who did it. Um, if any of you have any of these jewels, uh, hit us up. Send us some in the mail. We won't tell. <laughs> we will not tell for the yeah. price of one jewel. <laughs> you got to subscribe to our Patreon, and it, but it's on the jewel tier. It's so, yeah. so five bucks, but you just give us a jewel. You get access to our back catalog, and we you got to show us the jewel. <laughs> hey, don't want to give us a jewel? How about a ruby? You can give us a yeah. ruby. <laughs> yeah, just go on. Just give us something, man, please. <laughs> oh, man. The Jim and Ruby expedition. That's, that's what it's called, the Jim and Ruby? It was the Jim and Ruby show. International Jim and Ruby show. Damn, that's wild. I'm just thinking like the name Jim and then like a lady named Ruby. And it's just like a country act or something. <laughs> well, damn, that's crazy. Casual well, shit, thanks for putting that together. Yeah, guys, if you got any information out there, uh, keep it to yourself. Don't snitch. But do. Yeah, don't snitch. Do hit us and, up. Uh, Again, shout out, shout out Miranda Green in uh, New York Magazine, who wrote a really great article about this. Uh, definitely check out that article. It has more, even more information. Uh, really appreciate uh, citing our sources here on Lie, Cheat, yeah. and Steal. Well, shit, yeah, thanks, Cass, for putting that together. Uh, so do you have anything coming up? Anywhere you're going to be at? Um, you know, I'm not sure. Uh, follow me on social media at Kath Barbadoro. Um, I am, uh, I have another podcast called What a Time to Be Alive that comes out every week. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. What about you, Pat? Uh, let's see. I have, uh, I have some shows coming up, but I think by the time this is out, the one that I'm going to want to uh, get out there is I'm going to be at Spider House Ballroom on G- uh, July 3rd. That's going to be the first Monday where uh, Vanilla Presley is performing. We're the Shit's Golden House Band now. Shit's Golden. Oh, Long nice. But Austin, yeah. We're doing that every month. Also, I'm starting a brand new show at uh, South Austin Comedy Club. It's going to be July 8th. This is our first one out the gate. we got Rochelle McConaughey headlining. She's hilarious. Aaron Suarez is featuring, and Dulce Mac is doing a guest spot. It's going to be at 930. It's called Saturday Pint Live, and it's just going to be a good time. It's, it's, the, 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 it's the comedy club's in a brewery, so it's going to be fun. Come on nice. out if you're in the Austin area. If you're not, please fly here immediately. Um, that that makes- actually reminds me. I, I do have one gig I want to plug. Uh, my monthly show, Paid Protest, is on July 7th at 8 p.m. at uh, The Loft, which is 90 Scott Ave in Bushwick, Brooklyn. So come to that. It should be really fun. We have a great lineup. And thank you for listening, everybody. Yeah, guys, thanks for tuning in. And remember, we are on Patreon at patreon.com slash lie, cheat, and steal. We're also on TikTok at, at, at lie, cheat, steal podcast and on Twitter at LCS podcast. Come and find us. Uh, but in the meantime, guys, if you're out there in any parts of the country that are just getting baked alive, uh, <laughs> be cool, stay safe, be smart, but above all, don't get caught. Don't get caught. See you next time.